Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite sh cycling shoe brands. And um, I personally own like three pairs of their shoes because I'm terrible. <laughs> I, I can't stop buying cycling shoes. But um, so it's kind of an unboxing more than anything else. And this company, Garnet, is honestly one of my favorite shoe brands and if you've been watching the channel you'll know i've got a few that are some of my favorite shoe brands but um this one's got a great story i mean they have been making shoes in italy forever it seems a lot of their employees are still with the company 30 40 years and um the owner who i wonder if he's passed away yet he was I think 83 in 2016, 17. Um, there was an article that uh, Pink Bike did on the Garnet shoe brand. And just Google uh, Pink Bike Garnet and you should be able to find it. And in that article, tons of pictures, ha um, you'll see their production, pro well, their design process, production process, and all that. And also they... Um, have made custom molds, custom lasts for different cyclists over over time. And they've always made um, a custom shoe once or twice um, for riders, but then also like a special or limited edition shoe. And just beautiful, beautifully made shoes. So let's talk about this shoe, which is the new um i think it's supposed to be stilo there's no vowels it's stl <laughs> so g dot stl and that used to say uh stilo and there's some differences between this shoe and this shoe and i want to point them out to you first of all what do you guys think about this color this color is called iridium and it's a matte iridium so it's not a shiny glossy look but if you move this thing around in the sunlight it does change a little bit now um let's talk about the upper for a minute if you open up your two boas and then open up the shoe what you'll find is inside here there is a velcro portion um, stitched on here so that you can once you bring this flap over you can keep the tongue it's the most frustrating thing for me when i'm wearing a pair of cycling shoes and the tongue starts to slip to one side or the other that's super frustrating. And then I got to tug on it, keep it straight, and then cinch down my shoes. So this is going to keep that tongue right in, right in the position you put it the entire time. Okay. You can also see that the closure now goes up and over your foot. So different from this one, which is, you know, an open, open part here in the center okay and it's had a velcro strap as well this is an older shoe but um it's just to show you some advancements in the design of the closures um this shoe i mean literally it fits like a glove now one of the things i want to point out is if you've been watching my channel you know that i do or i've done reviews on lake shoes and their carbon see where this sole ends here the carbon continues on the inside of the shoe whereas on this shoe this is all um, going to mold to your foot just in a very natural organic way because there is no carbon fiber coming up on the sides there's and i guess it's important to mention now there is no molding capabilities for this shoe okay now Back here, you have a nice grippy part. So when you put your foot in, in the heel, it's going to grab 
your heel or your sock. Keep it secure there. Let's talk about the sole now because this is where they did a lot of changes and this is important to point out. So now you have some ventilation holes here. Let me see if I can put that there so you can focus on it, Mr. Cameraman. By the way, uh, these were a special order and we had to wait about three to four weeks to get these from Italy. Their shoes are still made in Italy. Um, distribution is still a little bit um, old school. So we got these specially ordered for my for my customer. Now, the ventilation holes are new. The way they've done some of this uh, arch support and stiffness here. You have a replaceable heel pad, which is always nice. But the one thing or two things I really want to point out, which are really nice um, for cleat installation. First thing is, this is grippy. This is an anti-slip type of situation here where a lot of times you get these shoes, they're so slick that you're trying to mount the cleat on here and it slips. And then you have to torque it down so tight, um, the, the three bolt pattern. Uh, by the way, this does come in a speed play edition. So that'll be four um, mounting a situation where you have four mounting um, inserts and but the sizes are limited so I believe it starts at 41 whereas this shoe starts 39 40 41 and then you start the half sizes on the speed play edition it starts at 41 um, anyway so this grippy part is really nice when you mount a cleat the last pair of lake shoes I sold to a gentleman he noticed as he was putting the cleats on that the, the cleat kept, kept slipping. He was like, is that okay? And I'm like, yes, it's fine. You just got to torque it down a little bit tighter. The other thing, so there was two things. One was this anti-slip. The other thing is they've increased this, um, the ability to move your cleat by nine millimeters. And so if we look at the old shoe, you'll see that the old shoe had a fixed anchor uh, for your inserts. They were fixed and here they're able to slide uh, up or back. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan about having your cleats slid all the way back. And um, it's interesting because I, I've paid attention to some other fit videos and um, there's quite a few people out there who are no longer of the opinion that you should have your cleat positioned to where, let's simulate that this cleat is installed, to where the pedal spindle would be right here on the center of the cleat. Some of them are fine with it being behind the ball of your foot so it's interesting because i've often thought with many many shoes i want to get that cleat as far back as possible as far back as possible right but um and then continuing on about the soul the soul is now on a scale of one to ten this is now a 12 stiffness level and you know <laughs> if I have any uh, older people in the crowd, you might remember that the um, the little joke there with the, um, I forget the name of the movie, but the guy says, oh yeah, this, this uh, amp goes to 11, right? Well, this one goes to 12. So on a stiffness level scale of um, 1 to 12, I'm sorry, one to 10, this one's 12, but we could also say that on their scale, one to 12. So the, the highest end shoe comes with a 12 sole, stiffness sole, and all the other shoes are coming with um, a 10 or lower. So when people ask, well, what's the difference between the high end shoe? Why am I paying X amount for that one? And you know, this one's less expensive. Well. A lot of times it just comes down to the material stiffness 
or the stiffness of the sole, the comfort, things like that. And in this case, the stiffness of the sole means you have to use different carbon fiber to keep it light and reinforce it. So now, because everyone always wants to know how much does the shoe weigh, and these are 309, and that's with the uh, insole inside the shoe. It is a size 45, so everything is proportional after that. Um, lower, smaller sizes, lower weight. All right, so that's all for today. I wanted to show you these shoes because I love this shoe company. I love these shoes, and I'm probably going to get myself a pair. <laughs> but that's all for today. Please like and subscribe, and please hit that notification bell if you can, <laughs> and we'll see you up the road.